You know, there's nothing we can't do when we stand together. Pastor Daryl, there's nothing we can't do. Pastor Steve, the body of Christ, churches coming together, spirit-filled churches coming together, the body of Christ coming together to say, God, what do you want to do in Colombia? We'll put a stake in the ground and say, this is our territory, and we're taking it back. No more of what the enemy has stole. This is our place, and we're taking it back. There's more people around here that need to fill up these churches. Sometimes we cry out, we pray, and we got to say, send revival, send revival. We want to see revival. I want to see revival too, but God sent revival 2,000 years ago. As Jesus Christ, the victory, the revival came, and he said, it is finished. Now we need to walk in that. We're going to have a powerful four days. I don't know if we're going to call it revival or whatever, but I know that we're going to get serious before God, and I know that God never lets us down. I know that people will be healed, delivered, set free, finances set free, addictions set free, salvations. God is going to speak to people. It's easy for us as Christians to sit back and say, God, send revival. It's harder for us to go out and start the revival. We're here to start it. This is our city and we're taking it back. If you want to see something in Colombia, let's do it. Let's do it. I go to many different places and I see people and they say, you know, God will have who he wants there. That's a lie from the pit of hell. It is our job as Christians. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Not, don't worry, I've got this. It is our job to go out and get them by any means necessary. You know what? If we have a powerful night tonight and people get healed and whatever, and God just blows the lid off this place tonight, and you guys go back and say, that was amazing. I'm coming back tomorrow. It'll be the same people here. It's your job to go out and get them and bring them and say, God is doing something in Colombia. God is doing something. It's our job to go get them. I hear a lot of people say, well, God, God will have who he wants. Or, well, you, you are expecting that as Christians, you know, sometimes I say, God, where, where's your voice, God? Am I doing the right thing? And, and sometimes we question if we're doing the right thing and if we're, we're really hearing the voice of God clearly and then we expect a non-Christian to hear the voice of God clearly enough to get out of where they're at, out of their comfort zone, and come into a meeting like this. It's not going to happen unless you bring them. It's not going to happen unless you drag them here and say, God is doing something. You need a miracle in your life. I know where it is. It's Jesus Christ. You need freedom. You need victory. Your marriage is falling apart. Your finances are falling apart. Your health is falling apart. Come this week. God will touch you. This is going to be a powerful week, and you're not going to want to miss one night. But I don't want you to just look at this as a, a week for you to get cro closer to God and break through. Let's save Columbia. Let's pack out this place where we have to move into a bigger room by the end of the four days. God can do it. The only limit... God has is us. And when churches start to stand together and say, what do you got, want to do in, in our city, God? There's nothing we can't do. I'm believing for more churches to be coming here by the end of the week. More people. I want to see your church full. After we leave, I want to see it packed. Pastor Steve, we need to see Destiny full. You got a new building. We got to see it full. We should be thinking about buying a new building already. One thing at a time. 
But I know this is going to be a powerful, powerful week for you guys. It's going to be a powerful week for me. And it's going to be a powerful week for all those people that don't even know it yet. I've been texting and calling my neighbors. They'll be here. They don't even know it's coming. Because there's a difference between coming to church and having a church service and coming to a place with believers and let God be God and let God move in power. Not just to talk it, but to walk it out. A God of actions where when we pray, we see miracles. When we speak, Miracles happen because we serve a God that's still alive. And Jesus came and finished it all. Are you guys ready for this week? Can you guys thank the worship team one more time? Thank you, Destiny, so much. It is my privilege and honor to introduce tonight's speaker to you guys. Uh, we've done ministry for about 15 years all over. We're doing, we're part of the kingdom movement. So we're doing, you know, about 17 youth conferences. We did one in Columbia. Is anybody here in Columbia when we were here? Woo! Both of the youth said, yeah. <laughs> all right. We do about seven. Though. We've seen thousands of students come to Christ. The last season we're doing women's conferences. We're doing meetings like this all over the world. We're go we were in Jamaica last year together. We're going to Nicaragua um, soon. And we are just excited about what God is doing all over the world. There is revival coming because God is touching his people. And he's saying it is time for harvest. And I believe that Columbia is ready for harvest. It is my privilege and honor to introduce to you guys Mr. Joseph Z. All the way from Colorado. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Man, what a great evening to be with Jesus, huh? Man, that worship tonight was wonderful. Man of God, that, that the prophetic you were flowing into was so good tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Man, I just want to say something about that. You know, Ryan just mentioned your building, but during worship, I saw a building for you. I saw a building, and then I saw one-third of it get blown out and added on to it's like whatever the size is right now, one-third more is going to, it's going to come quick. An expansion is going to blow out to the side, and you're going to have to add one-third more to it. Resources are going to come like water. Things are going to just begin to flow. I see um, a team of men standing around you, a team of businessmen coming around you and saying, yeah, we're going to go get it done. We're going to do it. And there's going to be good things that take place with that, that God is moving on behalf of, of that, and also with your teaching. Uh, your teaching is going to go. It's going to come more in written form also. And God's beginning to open that, that avenue up for you. And there's a lot of, how could I say it? There's a lot of things beneath the surface with you that you have not shared with people that God has cultivated in you for the last 13 years. For 13 years, he's cultivated something deep inside you. No, it's 22 years. And then 13 years, it got serious. And this last year, uh, there's some things that have been on the shelf, in the back burner, in the safe of your heart. And God's beginning to bring these things out. And you're going to release them. It's going to be very mighty. People are going to live. And there's a, a strong thrust and a theme that's going to come out that people have not seen from you before. It's going to be very strong, man of God. Your church is going to explode. God's favor is on you. It's really going to work. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when David was seeking the Lord in the back 40, killing the lion and the bear, all those things, uh, that's because he was preparing for Goliath. And you're going into your season where you're going to blow the doors off your calling. God is saying that you've prepared, and now you're stepping into it. It's going to really work. So I bless you, man of God. I don't know you, but I like you. God's good. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that good worship tonight? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we didn't get all dressed up for nothing, right? We're here to have a night with Jesus. We're here to get after it. Praise God. My name is Joseph Z. I, I, I go by Joe Z or whatever. And uh, my wife, Heather, and I, we have a ministry together. Ryan and I have been doing ministry together for about 15 years. We've been doing uh, meetings all over the world, building this kingdom movement. And I'll tell you, God is um, a wonderful God. People say he's a good father. No, he's a great father. 
He's like as good as it gets, man. I mean, he is, he is wonderful to us. So I want to simply say to you tonight, you know, we have a lot of things, a lot of war stories, a lot of things we've come through. I've preached in stadiums all over the world. I've preached in home groups. We've done everything God's called us to do. I got kicked out of my house at 13 years old for serving Jesus. We've been serving the Lord. And I'll tell you what, God has done so many things uh, in this season through our lives. And I've seen him do so many mighty things that God wants to do some mighty things in your life tonight. I, I just, you know, just the last few years, I've seen the Lord heal my son of autism. I've seen my wife get through a kidney transplant where she was on dialysis for three years. I've seen over and over again the miraculous healing power of God, the voice of God speaking to me. I had my first open vision uh, when I was at a Pensacola meeting. We were talking about Pensacola. I was there at the revival. had an open vision. And the Lord showed me that I was going to be throwing these little mustard seeds or seeds. And I, I'd launch these little seeds and they'd land on concrete, when they hit concrete, they'd hit with the force of two tons, and it would break up the ground. And the Lord said, so shall your words and your teaching be. That comes forward. Yeah, that was the first open vision I had, and God began to speak to me that way in a number of times. I'm telling you tonight, we're not here by mistake. We're not messing around. We're here to bring the glory of God in the house. And you know what? We don't have to beg God to show up because we brought him. You brought him. Glory to God, you brought him. He's here. Thank you, Jesus. You know how much the church is living beneath its means? And I mean the body of Christ as a whole. We're living beneath our means when we need to realize what God actually gave us. If we really understood something, ladies and gentlemen, that we're made in the image and the likeness of God and how that operates, we would never act the same again. We would never act the same again. We would act like Jesus. We would act like God. Because we're made in his image and likeness. You know, it says in Psalm chapter 8, verse 5, it says there, you've made, what is man that you are mindful of him? You've made him a little lower than the angels. But if you look in that Hebrew word for angels, the Hebrew word is Elohim. What is man that you're mindful of him? In verse 5 of chapter 8, you've made him a little lower than God. Some people with religion will swallow hard on that one. Like, what, what are, you are you trying to say that we're God? No, I did not say that. What I'm trying to say to you is that the class and order that we are in is God, man, angels, devil. And when we start understanding who we are, we start to know who we are in Jesus. We start walking these things out before the Lord. Authority will strike your heart. Authority will stand up. You're, you, every Christian that's in this place, your presence when you walk into a place should demand an explanation when you walk in. I was at the airport yesterday. Yesterday, I'm at the airport. I sit down next to Jason. Jason and I are traveling here together. I sit down in the airport, and this lady looks over at me. I'm sitting next to her, and she said, something inside me, a spirit told me to speak to you. And I said, that's because, lady, I'm a divine, I'm a walking divine appointment. She looked at me, and she said, I believe you. <laughs> And so we started talking, found out, and she's like, well, I live over in Utah. And I said, and you're Mormon? And she said, I'm Mormon. And I said, that's great. I said, we got something to talk about. We got Jesus to talk about. And I'll tell you what, that happens to me nearly every day when I'm traveling and all that. The reason is because my presence demands an explanation. Yours should too. Praise God. Nothing special about me, I'll tell you that right now. Praise God, I'm not impressed with me, but I'll tell you, when you know Jesus, you walk into places and your presence will demand an explanation. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know what the church and the world both need to see? Both the church and the world deserve to see something. Mature believers. Mature believers. They don't fall apart with every storm that comes along. They're rooted and grounded in the Word of God. They know how to worship. They know how to stand. I like being around believers that can stand. You know what I'm talking about? You get around believers, and some believers are so emotional, they don't know if they're coming or going. They're crying. They're listening to a worship song, but there's no word in it, so they're all over the map. They have no foundation of the Bible in them. And the, then storms of life hit them, and they're all over the place. I like believers that a storm hits them, and it's like, what else you got? I remember when the doctor told me my wife was going to die. Man, my wife is the jewel of my life. I love her. And I remember he kept telling me, she's going to die. She's going to die. I'm so sorry to tell you this. Finally, after about the 20th time they told us that, we started laughing hysterically in the doctor's office. And I said, look, sorry, doctor. It's, it's not you. I respect your profession. We're not laughing at you. We just know something you don't know. 
And she came through, man. You wait till you hear her preach. My wife broke her neck and died one time and saw Jesus. She didn't have just a little, like, I fell asleep, I was eating pizza, little tremble, and I was in the presence of the Lord. No, she broke her neck, and she went and saw the Lord. She she maybe talk about that when she's here. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a great night in Jesus tonight. Look at your neighbor tonight and say, somebody get ready. Look right back at him and say, you know what? You're looking really good tonight, by the way. And then look back at them, look back at that same person and say to them, you know what? By faith, I'm looking really good tonight. That really hurts religion, doesn't it? That's hard on religion. I don't want to say it. I don't want to. Praise God. God is so good. He wants to touch you tonight. He wants to open your life up. We came here as couriers and carriers of God's presence. We came here tonight to give you something. I came here loaded to give you something in the name of Jesus. I came here tonight fully loaded to execute and drop the word of God on you so you can go forward and begin to win in your life and in your family and in your marketplace and everything else God's called you to do. Tonight is your night to begin again and add to what God's called you to do. This is your night. You came to the right place tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Hallelujah. I don't know who this woman right here is. I don't know who this woman is right here. But when this woman is singing and I see intercession all over you and the word of God is gushing out of you, I can literally see your life when I was standing in front of you. I could feel and see your life as you sing the word and you speak the word. And God says, I have moved many mountains because of intercession that has come through you, even in nations from here. Other nations and people have been rescued because of the prayers that have come through a woman of God. I can see the prayer. I can see the heart cry of God inside you. God has called you. Praise God. And woman of God, the Lord says, I spare even family. I spare daughters. I spare what God has called you to do. There's been people rescued out of vile situations because of your words and your intercession. And some people might say, oh my goodness, it's unique how she prays. It's unique how she flows. But I am telling you, the Holy Spirit is with you. And the word of God flows through you. You are a warrior and you carry the face of the lion. God has given it to you for victory in the name of Jesus. Woman of God, when you think of me, pray for me. That is an amazing gift. The Word of God is on you. Hallelujah. There's a mountain-moving faith of intercession on your life. Hallelujah. I receive it. I receive it. Oh, yeah. Woo! Oh, glory to God. Well, we're just getting started. Hallelujah. Is this okay? Everybody okay so far? Was that too soon? Amen. Okay. Praise God. God's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you about something tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's so many things I want to tell you, and I know that we we only have a little bit of time here tonight. I want to say this to you. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. I'm going to read this out of the New King James. Praise God. The New King James. Revelation 17 and verse 14. We could go there in our Bibles, or if it's on the screen, I don't know if we'll have that here tonight. Revelation 17 verse 14. This is going to be a powerful scripture for some people this evening, and I want you to hear it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're there in Revelation 17 and 14 tonight, give me an amen. Amen. It says in verse 14, these will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords. Somebody say, "Lord Lord of lords, and King of kings. Say, King of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. They are called, chosen, and faithful. Praise God. If we have the New New King James Version, I'd like that up there if it's possible, but if not, no problem. But it says they are called, chosen, and faithful. But I want you to notice something here. The Lord is referred to as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. In other verses throughout the Bible, which we could go into, it also talks about how he's the King of the Kings and the Lord of Lords. That represents twofold, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Everybody say, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Say it one more time. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Say, Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This represents two things. Everybody say two. This represents two things. One, it represents that Jesus, in the end and even today, rules and reigns over the kings and the lords of the earth. Lords are people that are responsible for things, and they own things, and they have dominion over things. Kings have a governmental authority over those things. So kings and lords are nearly the same, but they differ in rank. Kings are higher than lords. 
kings and lords. This is talking about two things. One, the rulers and the lords of this age, the kings and lords of this earth, meaning natural people running countries, running small situations, running things that they own, lords that own things, kings and lords. This is natural rulers and people in this physical world. Secondly, it is a representation of what we are going to be under Jesus now and in eternity. Listen to me carefully tonight. Listen. Jesus is the King of the Kings and the Lord of the Lords. When, you, when somebody ever asks you, you need, and they say to you, who do you think you are? You're preaching the gospel, you're doing something, and if somebody says to you, Pastor, who do you think you are? Our answer should be to them, how much time do you have? Amen. Our answer should be, how much time do you have? The reason it should be is because when we're responding to Jesus, we're responding in faith. If we realize who we really are, this world is, is it, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul, remember when Paul said, listen to me carefully, remember when Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he said, why is believer going to law against believer? Why are you going to court against believers? Why are believers going at each other and all these things? Do you, and they're going before unbelievers to be mediators between them? Now, I understand some of that stuff is unavoidable in life, but Paul was making a point, and the point is this. When you do that, it, you recognize something, and his, his emphasis was that he said, do you not know that you will judge the world and you will judge angels? Bible or not Bible? That's Bible. For those of you that read it, amen. <laughs> no, that's Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it talks about it, that we will judge the world and we will judge angels. That's what it says. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because Paul had a mindset about eternity. He had a mindset about how the kingdom works. And the kingdom is made of power. The kingdom is not of words, but it is backed up in power. It's backed up in the power of God. It's backed up in love. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Amen? Now, when we understand this, listen very carefully, ladies and gentlemen. This means that you and I, under Jesus, are royalty. It means that we have dominion and we're also a class of ruling. Remember what I said in the beginning. God, man, angels, devil. We think it's God, devil, man. That's what religion teaches. God, devil, angels, even with the devil, man. Not so. We're made in his image and likeness. His image and likeness. And if you begin to grasp this, it will literally, do you know why God hates sin so bad? Not because he hates people or he's trying to mess you up or mess up your fun or pop your balloon or any of that stuff. It's not because God's going, I just, I just can't stand sin. God's character is the opposite of what sin is. And because of that, when he sees people that are made in his image and likeness acting out on those things, he looks at that and says, I would never do that. I would never do that. And he loves you. It's not a negative thing. He's not angry at you. God's not, God's not even in a bad mood, ladies and gentlemen. He's not. He's a happy God. He's a happy God. Do you know that God has a sense of humor? You know that? If, if you don't believe that, look at the person next to you. <laughs> Amen. God has a sense of humor. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But you've got to recognize something about this, though, that you are kings and lords. It says in Revelation 17, 14, that you are kings and lords. And it says those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Called, chosen, and faithful if you're with him. To the level that you are called, chosen, and mainly faithful, that's to the level I believe that we will rule and reign with him in eternity. Now listen, that has nothing to do with your righteousness. That has nothing to do with how much God loves you. That has nothing to do with performance-based religion, trying to earn something with God to be made better and more righteous in his sight. But there is levels to obedience of what we will be responsible for in the age to come. There really is. You're righteous. If you quit today and you're in Christ, he loves you. He loves you. He'll wipe away the tears and say, this is what could have been, but you know what? Come on in. Come on into your inheritance. I love you. But it does say in the Word of God, 30, 60, and 100-fold. Right? Some grew 30, some 60, some 100-fold. And we've got to get to this point where we start to understand this because here's what's going to take place. We're going to die. In the end, we're going to die. We're going to cross the veil. 
This is going to be the millennial reign of Jesus. This isn't taught very much, but it's in the Word of God. He's going to rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. We were not designed to live in heaven. Let me repeat that. We were not designed to live in heaven. Heaven's great. We're going to be there. But we were designed to rule and reign on this planet. That's why God put Adam and Eve in the garden in the beginning. He said, tend it, cultivate it, do this, build the garden, take care of it, take dominion over the earth. And I believe that God from there said, go ahead and spread it. He wanted Adam and Eve to put the garden on the entire planet. That's what he wanted. But they were fooled by the devil, man gave them their dominion, and on we go. I want to say something very important today. God has been restoring the Garden of Eden since the beginning. He put a plan in motion immediately. And that plan is in operation right now. And that plan, ladies and gentlemen, is that we would rule and reign with him as kings and lords forever. Everybody say reign. Not the kind where it comes down from heaven and rain hits the ground. I'm talking reigning over things. We're going to reign with him forever and ever. And what we do in this life counts for that. When you realize that you're made in the image and likeness of God and we get on the other side of the veil, we're not just going to be going in one giant worship service for all eternity. That's unbiblical. People always say that. We're just going to worship forever, standing there. If that was the case, I'd love it. If that's what God has, I'm good with that, man. I'll throw my crowns down. I'll, I'll sit there and worship, praise God. Ball my eyes out and say, thank you, God, that we're, you even let us here, you know? But at the end of all that, listen to me. God wants us to rule and reign with him. Reign with him. It says in Revelation chapter 21 that we will reign with him forever and ever. That means something. That means you and I need to get ready for the largest part of our existence. Can I shake you out of your carnality tonight? Can I wake you up out of a stupor that's on the church? This life we are in is so short. It's so short. It's so small. It's so minute. But when you get the Word of God inside you and you begin to understand who you are in Christ, you get on the other side of the veil and you'll realize, like Paul said, the trials I go through right now are not even worthy to be compared with what shall be revealed in me when I get to the other side. The glory that shall be revealed in me when I get to the other side. The responsibility that shall be revealed in me when I get to the other side. The ability to reign forever when I get to the other side. I'm going to rule and reign as a king and a Lord under the great king and the great Lord. Amen. You begin to recognize this, ladies and gentlemen. You begin to recognize this, and it'll change your life. It'll change your life. Paul had a revelation of Jesus. You know, when they were first preaching the gospel, they were preaching rules, regulations, uh, get saved, know the Lord, do all this stuff. In, in Galatians chapter 1, Paul said the gospel he preached didn't come to him by man, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. John the Revelator in the book of Revelation, he had a revelation of, from Jesus, that Jesus told him about the future. Paul the Apostle had a different kind of revelation, the Greek word apocalypsis, for those of you Greek nerds, praise God. Apocalypsis, in the, in the book of Galatians chapter 1, Paul had the same revelation word that John had, but it wasn't something Jesus was showing him. Jesus was showing Paul himself. And when Jesus was showing Paul who he was, Paul suddenly said, I know the gospel. I know the gospel. I know the gospel. I understand it. And it's the grace of God made available for all mankind by grace through our faith. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, how does this apply tonight? It applies this way. Some of you are dealing with issues that are slowing you down. Some of you are being crippled by your belief system, by your thinking, and it's usually one of about five to ten things. It's either moral issues, it's either finances, it's relationships, it's all these things. It's the way we think. Did you know you can't even be tripped up with what you're not thinking about? So listen to me very carefully, ladies and gentlemen. You were designed to rule and reign forever with Jesus. And just so you know, eternal life doesn't begin when we die. You have eternal life right now, tonight, in this place. 
Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Not your physical body, but your supernatural spirit man. You're in eternal life right now. And I'm telling you something, in the name of Jesus, when you get a revelation of who you are, let me tell you about this. When I got a revelation of who I was in Jesus, I was younger, I was probably in my teens, I began to read the entire New Testament once a week. I began to read it, I began to listen to it. I couldn't always keep up with the reading, so I'd listen to it, and I'd go through the entire New Testament once a week. If there's anything that's really difficult for this young generation, it's the fact that so many young people are not reading the Bible. They don't know the Bible. They're like, but I want, a, I want a feeling, Jesus, a feeling. The Holy Ghost is a, mm, a feeling. He's a feeling. He's a feeling. Mm, mm, a feeling. Little jerk, little shake, little something. It's a fee- no, it's not. He's not a feeling. That feeling is a byproduct of who he is. Feelings will betray you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Praise God. What if I felt like coming down there and choking Ryan? Ryan's like, oh, you go for it, man. But what if I felt that way? I just felt like doing that. That'd be terrible. Just because you feel something doesn't mean you do anything. Your feelings are fickle. And consequently, you're supposed to dominate over them. I got a hold of the New Testament when I was younger. I began to read the whole thing through. I'll tell you what, I was walking into churches where they're very seeker-friendly, and I bless those churches. I'm thankful for them. We need to have people coming forward and getting to know Jesus somehow, you know, get somebody saved through a puppet show, whatever it takes. Amen? Amen. And people getting born again, all that stuff. I walked into a church one time, though, and I've been reading the New Testament. I've been doing this, and I'll never forget this, man. I walked in, and this girl stood up, and she's like, I know you! (laughs) And this demon came out of her. You know, and I've had that happen in a lot of places. Walk into gas stations, have demons manifest. Praise God. One time, one was coming at me in a gas station. I told the person, go stand in the corner. And they're like, "Mm." (laughs) and they went and stood in the corner. I don't know what else to do. Praise God. I thought, I don't know, man, what's going on here? We had people come to some of our conferences. They brought a witch to me. They brought a witch one time, and she'd just been levitating in front of some people, floating and all that on a magic carpet ride. And so anyway, she comes into this this back room. I'm between sessions. They bring a witch in. They're like, this lady's been a part of human sacrifice. This has been terrible. There's all these things going on. And I said, big deal. And they said, no, no, no. We got to go into warring tongues, brother. You don't understand. I said, no, no, we don't. I said, greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. This is a chihuahua. We don't need to work with that. Not that way. Quit giving it so much attention. We're going to tear the devil down. We're going to cast the devil out. Jesus said the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me, and he is being cast out. Jesus threw him out of heaven in the, in, right between in the, before he went to the cross. He started to cast him out of heaven right then. People say, well, he can go to the Father and accuse us day and night and all those things. But Jesus took that place. Man, I I wish I could teach on that for an hour. We'd be shouting and going, oh my goodness, I've been fighting the wrong fight. So this this witch comes in, she's there, and she said, I can't control it, I can't control it, it just takes over and all that stuff. I said, you know what? A man with a legion of demons fell on his knees in front of Jesus. I don't think the demons brought him there and said, let's go see Jesus. I think the man ran, and he had more authority over a legion of demons than they had over him. And I want to say to you something very clearly. This lady is there, and I said, I'm not going to pray for you unless you take dominion over that demon yourself. And she's like, I can't. I said, well, bye. And I started to leave. She's like, wait. <laughs> and uh, we started talking, and within, I had to go do a session. She goes, well, aren't you going to get her set free right now? I said, you know, she's been bound for probably 20 years. I think five more minutes will be okay. Maybe another 30 minutes. I did a session, came back, and I just walked in. Everybody went into warring tongues. You know, or emergency tongues, you know what I mean? Anybody get into emergency tongues? You know? You start going and you just click in, man. You say, shoot about a Honda, shoot about a Honda. Okay. And so, anyway, we get down to that point. I finally looked at this lady and I just said, hey, everybody zip it, Skippy. You're giving this thing attention. Knock it off. Let's calm down. And I said, out. And it left. Do you know why? Because you know who you are. That thing knows if you know who you are too. Praise God. 30 seconds. No problem. Her countenance changed. She had a whole new complexion. She's like, I've never felt so good in my whole life. I said, sweetheart, you need to put the word of God in you. You need to get good discipleship because the best form of deliverance is ongoing good teaching. So praise God. So So anyway, so we had a lot of these experiences and all that stuff, but I just want to simply say to you tonight, I've been all over the world, I've seen all that stuff, you know, 
We've ministered to leaders in parliament, presidents, and all this stuff of nations, done stadium meetings, predicted who's going to win the presidency in different countries, and been a part of all those things. But i got to tell you something. God wants to touch America. He's looking for people to agree with him to get the job done. God can't. Ryan said it so eloquently at the beginning. God can't just reach out and make it happen. He's limited himself to mankind. He has limited himself. Could he override it? Sure he could. Is God all-powerful? Sure he is. People say, can God make a stone so big that God can't lift it? Yes, it's called his word. He will not alter the thing that has gone up from his lips. He will not change it. He will not break his covenant. If God broke his word, if he changed his word, if he changed his promise, the whole universe would come unraveled because it is held together by the word of his power. And the word of God is Jesus. And the word of God made flesh is Jesus in this earth. And consequently, Jesus is still a man today, living in heaven until he returns. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God is awesome. We're going to have four days of awesome meetings in this place. I want to tell you something right now. We're going to have four days of awesome meetings in this place. God's going to light you up like a Christmas tree if you allow him to. It's going to be awesome. Glory to God. So what are we? We're kings and lords. We're under the great king and the great Lord. He is the king of the kings and the Lord of the lords. I believe that's why there's so many barren planets in the universe. I believe earth was practice. I do. They can't even count how many there are. If I tried to go through all the math of it, you know, remember Louis Giglio all those years ago did the math and all that? You're like, oh my goodness, that's huge, you know? I don't even know how to say that. And then this star here, you just see a white wall come across the stage, that's another star. You know, it's just huge. We realize our galaxy, our universe, is not even something we can fathom. We really can't. But we are going to be responsible, I believe, to rule and reign in the universe across the entire thing. Why does man have an unction to go into space travel? Why do we want to explore? Because God put that in us in the beginning. I'm not saying something weird here or something off base. I just want to say very clearly to you that you are marked to reign with him forever. And it's have a lot to do after we get on the other side of the veil. This little time, the age of grace, the church age we're living in, this little season, this tiny sliver that was hidden in the Old Testament but revealed in the New, I believe this is the age that we're going to see our, our destiny be built for what we're going to do in eternity. What you do now counts for then. It really does. Your righteousness is a settled deal. God loves you no matter what. It's settled. It's finished. When Jesus said, it is finished, it was. But now, there's obedience. There's what we're going to do before him. There's what we're going to do, you know. And I, I'm a, oh man, I, I heard the grace message, the pure grace message, a number of years ago, and I bawled my eyes out because I was such a Pharisee. I got set free of a lot of stuff. And I'll tell you, though, God's grace is so for you. He loves you. But did you know that when people say, God, I will engage your call in my life, and I will meet it by faith, not through works to earn anything, but by faith I will say yes to what you tell me to do, what I feel stirring in here. By faith I'll take your grace and I'll go accomplish. When people get that driven into their heart, when you as a believer get that driven into your heart, we're an unstoppable force. We're an unstoppable force. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, we don't serve Twinkies here. We serve steak dinner, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to rule and reign with them, ladies and gentlemen. Your eternity, your eternity counts. What you do now counts for then. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. God's going to heal people tonight. God's going to touch people tonight. We're going to release the Word of God. You say, why did you call this conference Voice of God? Well, God gave me the name Voice of God many years ago. Ryan and I have come into agreement to use these conferences, just like Kingdom Movement, all these things we're doing. Voice of God means this. The Word of God preached, the Word of God taught, and the Word of God prophesied. The Voice of God. Thank you, Jesus. 
This isn't some spooky thing. We're not going to throw glitter in the air. None of that stuff. We're not going to run around and shake and roll on the floor. But if God wants to do that, I'm in. <laughs> but I just want to say to you, though, we're going to get horsepower. You're going to get horsepower in these meetings because we're not called to be uh, just converts. We're called to be disciples of Jesus. I asked my daughter the other day, I said, what's a disciple of Jesus, honey? She said, well, it's a follower of Jesus. I said, that's correct, but it's not complete. A lot of people can say, I'm just a follower of Jesus. Well, what does that mean? Well, I, I have a painting of him in my house. Jesus? You know, I, I love Jesus. But if you're not a follower of his words, you're not a disciple. You've got to be a follower of his words. Praise God. When you get a hold of the Word of God, it'll begin to change you. It'll begin to rock you. It'll begin to open up a reality to you. Most Christians are so carnal, and that doesn't mean sinful. It just means we think so much like the world. We think with this world system. We're so buried in this Babylonian teaching of all this stuff. And if we can get out of that, and there's only one way out, and that's by baptizing your mind and emotions in the Word of God and mixing it with your faith until the end result is that when you speak to the mountain, it moves. The end result is when you say, Lazarus, come forth, he comes forth. The end result is, is when you've got something going on in your mind, you can cast those thoughts down. You can take authority over every imagination. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And the word of God reigning in you, if you abide in him and his words abide in you, ask anything that you desire and it will be done for you. Amen. John 15, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory to God. What a great night. What a great night. Thank you, Jesus. God's in the house because we brought him. Amen? When you leave here, the Holy Spirit's not flittering in the room. There's no people. Why would he do that? The, the veil was torn. God doesn't live in buildings. He lives in you. Praise God. When you come into a meeting, when we come sit in a meeting, God says, I like this meeting. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Well, glory to God. Well, tonight we're going to just begin to minister a little bit. I think we're going to step into this. It's going to be a good night for some folks. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember the first times God started speaking to me. The first time I began to hear the voice of God. You know, people always ask, how do you find out what your gifting and your calling is? How do you discover it? How do you find out what your purpose is? Well, I'm convinced if you pour the word of God into you and you pour the word of God into you and you pray the word and you speak the word and you pour the word of God into you and you pour the word of God into you and you wean the world out. I'm not saying don't be responsible. I'm just saying you pour the word of God in. You pour the word of God in. Hallelujah. What will begin to happen is your gifting will manifest as a byproduct of pouring the word of God in. You'll discover who you are. Every time I pour the word of God in and I go deep in the word, I begin to pray the word, I spend time in the word, prophecy comes out of me. Other people, like my wife, healing comes out of her. My wife, we were in Brazil. Somebody had eczema all the way down their arms, all the way down their arms. She's praying. She goes and grabs this, this lady by the arms, grabbed it, and pulled it off like sleeves, and it fell off. Because she gets this anointing on her, man. My wife, she's about this tall, but she turns into like Benny Hinn, okay? Yeah. Bring him here, Steve. Stand them up again. Come on. You know, it's a, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lady, get out of the way. Bring it. Yeah. You know, and I bless Benny. Amen. I bless Brother Benny. I'm just saying, though, that's, that's what uh, she does, man. It's amazing. And things just begin to break loose and life begins to happen. Praise God. We've had religion dominating the church for so long, we've, we barely even know Jesus. Praise God. Jesus was some of the, one of the most offensive preachers that there was, and at the same time, the most loving, all at the same time. Remember when Jesus stood up and said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Remember that one? And all the people were like, ah, well, that's an allegory. He didn't mean that. Lord, you didn't mean like, you know, nah, nah, nah. you didn't mean that and drink your blood, did you? And he said, he doubled down. He said, as surely I say to you, if you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And then nearly everybody left, and he didn't stop them. 
And of course, we understand what that's really about. We realize that he is the bread from heaven. He is these things. We recognize that. He was, it was an allegory, but in that moment, he doubled down and drove the point home and didn't care if they got it or not. Isn't that interesting? If we would just stand in our authority and be who God's called us to be and everything he's marked us to be, I promise you, you would arrive at your divine destination. Listen to me carefully. We're going to minister in just a moment here. We're going to jump right in tonight, glory to God. <laughs> if you would just realize that you're only a few steps away from your designed destination, you'd have victory. You're only a few steps of obedience. Everybody say obedience. Only a few steps of obedience away from your divine destination. Praise God. <laughs> Too many Christians are too busy stepping on rakes. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. When I was a kid, I remember walking through a field. Anybody ever stepped on a claw rake like that? You know, the claws are up. You're walking through a field and you step on a rake and whoosh, never have that happen? I was a kid. My mom said, Joey, don't you go in that field. Don't you go in that field. I'm like, whatever, mom. You don't know. I ran in the field and there's goats in there. I'm like, look out, goats. And I'm running through the field. Next thing you know, whoosh, whoosh, right? I got a rake in the face. Busted my nose practically. I'm bleeding all over. I'm like, oh, that really hurt. She's like, I told you, you're stupid, you know. And, <laughs> and through that whole process, I realized something about it is many believers are like that. Many believers are walking along in life. I don't need to read the word. I don't need to do this or that. I'll do what I please. And God loves me. It doesn't matter. Or they don't even care. And they're walking along. Next thing you know, they step on a rake. And you try to tell them, hey, maybe don't walk that way. And they're like, shut up. Don't tell me what to do. And they keep going, right? And some people are addicted to stepping on rakes. They really like it. It's like they just are like, and you're just like, my gosh, what happened to you? And they're sitting there, and all of a sudden, they've been stepping on rakes. You look at them, and they're looking at their face, and they're like, ah, owie, 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 owie. And you say, hey, you kind of look messed up. And they're like, don't judge me. Don't look at me like that. Don't judge me. Try walking a mile in my shoes. And you're like, I don't really want to, you know, right? But a lot of people step on rakes like that, and it's because they're unteachable. They're not being obedient to the Word. They're not pouring the Word of God in. And people come along and try to tell them. They're like, you can't tell me what to do. Have you ever noticed sometimes the people that have the least and have done the least are the ones that know the most? <laughs> Don't shout me down. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the people that are the most unteachable and all that, they're the ones that just know it all. And I'm saying that tongue-in-cheek tonight because there's a lot of people that are so unteachable and they won't be bent, they won't be moved by the Word of God, so they're going to step on rakes and say, that's just how it is. Praise God. I want to say clearly to people tonight, can we soften our heart before the Lord tonight? Can we open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit? Can we open ourselves up for victory and freedom in this place tonight in Jesus' name? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's time for us to walk in the peace that passes all understanding and get a harness on the flesh through the Word of God. A lot of us have the flesh running around like the hunchback of Notre Dame, like Igor. <laughs> Nobody remembers Igor. Okay. Praise God. Remember Igor, little buddy that used to hang on the bell tower, you know, in the old you know, Frankenstein movies? You know? He'd be like, hey, hello, Master. Yeah. Right? He'd have the hunchback. He'd be running along. No. And he'd be like, you fool. Get the jumper cables. We're going to, <laughs> we're going to get Frankenstein living. And he'd be like, don't call me a fool. I will strike you, fool. Go get the jumper cables. And he would just look back at him. I'm not a fool. Don't call me. Don't strike me. Right, Igor? That's like your flesh, right? Do what I tell you to do, flesh. No. You gave me the cake last week. Flesh, I command you to read the word. No, Netflix. I love the Netflix. I'm going to binge watch. Mm, Stranger Things is on. <laughs> right? Praise God. Um, <laughs> too much? Too soon? Okay. So we got to recognize something about this, though, is that, you know, you remember Igor, he's that little buddy, he's hanging off the bell tower, remember him? Da-ding, da-ding, feet don't touch the ground, <laughs> right, da-ding, ding, never mind, okay. 
So we've got to recognize something about this, that God really wants you to dominate your flesh, but religion has come in and tried to make you do all the right things on the wrong foundation. And when you try and uh, dominate your flesh, you try and motivate yourself, you try to do all these things apart from the Holy Spirit of God and renewing your mind, you're going to be in religion. And you're going to be a mean Christian. If you're going to be a king and a lord, this is the prerequisite of called, chosen, and faithful. Faithful means proven. Proven believers coming together will give us a complete gospel. And the gospel we've all heard preached is correct. Jesus died, resurrected, rose on the third day. Churches preach it all over the country, all over the world. It's correct, but it is not complete until it's working in you. The gospel is correct, but it's not complete until it's working in you. Your doctrine may be correct, but it's not complete until it's working in you. Getting results. Oh, praise God. Can we lift our hands up to the Lord tonight? Just lift them up. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. God is good, and he is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Just for a moment, we're going to surrender to the Lord just for a moment. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to let the Lord God Almighty begin to rule and reign in this place, in our hearts and in our lives, right now. Thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is here. And he wants to touch people. He wants to talk to you right now. He wants to speak to you right now. There's somebody on the live broadcast, and you were driving a Jeep. I see a Jeep. Somebody was driving a Jeep. And in that setting, the Lord was just beginning to say over them, this person driving a Jeep, saying that I am watching over your going out and your coming in. I am protecting you. And it is important that you do not go the direction you know you're not supposed to go because I'm going to deliver you and I'm going to do a fast work even starting tonight. But you need to go the right direction and not that way. And you know what I'm talking about. In the name of Jesus. Don't cheapen your life. Don't cheapen yourself that way. Go in the right direction not the wrong direction, and God's going to give you liberty. He's already given it to you. Line up with that. Don't go towards death. That relationship is not yours. Thank you, Jesus. God loves you. Praise God. Some of you are in relationships, and I'm not going to go down the road on this too far, but I want to say some of you are in relationships that you're holding up before the Lord that don't belong to you. You're in bondage to relationships. Some of them are romantic. Some of them are boyfriend-girlfriend relationships. Some of them are inappropriate relationships. And I want to say to you very clearly, tonight's the night. The Lord, you've said, God, I don't know what to do. The Lord is telling you right now, execute. Stop it. Put a stop to it. If you stop it now, there will be no fallout. If you keep going, it will get harder and harder because you're sowing seed that will come back. Stop it now. Praise God, I bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sir, right here, you have a darker sweatshirt on. Uh, you have silver hair, man of God right here. Yes. I, I look at you, sir, and I see God is giving you witty ideas for multiplication. He's going to walk you forward in a way that you navigate through the next gates of where you belong. And God's giving you that understanding right now. It has something to do with trading resources or properties or I don't know what this is but God's fixing that for you right now he's going to open the way for you and you're going to walk through the gates with that and when you come through the gates you're going to go oh this was easy how did this happen how did I multiply like this I multiplied I didn't think that was going to happen in this season so quickly and the Lord says multiplication is upon you now I see a man talking to you and that man does not have the wisdom of God there's some things he's saying to you good man well intending 
but there's something there that's not the wisdom of God, and God's going to lead you in a way that brings you great victory, and you're going to walk through the gates, and great victory will be there for you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Something about white pillars. I bless you in the name of Jesus. God's opening that door for you right now. There's favor on your life. He's bringing strength to you and wholeness to you in every area. Wholeness in Jesus' name. The devil tried to snuff you out. He tried to stop you. Yeah, I can see it. He tried to literally take your life. Tried to stop you. You're over that now. It's too late. He should have killed you when you had, when he had the chance. And the Lord's bringing you forward now. I saw a car. You were in this car. You were driving along, and you made a deal with God. It's like the Lord said to you, I will, I will bless you. I will expand you. And God said, I'm expanding your life. I'm expanding the destiny. You're walking through the process. You will come to these gates. And there will be power there, and they're going to have, like, metal on them. And it's, it's powerful. And the Lord says, it's a sign unto you that I've been with you every step of the way. And rain will be on the ground, and the word of God will be coming forward, and people will live in that moment. And the Lord says, I've done it for you to have all things to richly enjoy, but also be prepared to sow in obedience. Man of God, I bless you. I speak increase to you, and your legacy is whole, and God's going to bring that forward and raise up whom he raises up, and it's going to surprise people. I bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I speak to your left artery and shoulder and all these things that has gone through and every artery in the name of Jesus I command recreated I command strength in Jesus name I command might in the name of Jesus I speak to every bit of that right now order and peace and life in Jesus name into your left shoulder in Jesus name that left shoulder that artery I command it to be strengthened and whole right now in the name of Jesus so be it says the Lord so be it then amen you're a good man. I like you. I can see mistakes. I can see all these things. But man of God, you have stood and stood the course of time. You've stood, been proven, and you're walking it out. Thank you for not quitting. Amen. Praise God. God's good. He's faithful. Yes, he is. Glory to God. Oh, he loves you so much. <laughs> he really does. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. The man who is here during worship, where is he? I see you. Okay. What's your name, man of God? Jaron? Jared? Praise God. Well, Jared, in Jesus' name. Okay. Media, technical ability, all these things God's put in you for creativity and expanding that. God's going to put spokes like around a wheel into a hub. The hub is you. There's going to be creativity that comes out of you and God's going to increase you. Also, I see God is raising up a legacy for you that's going to come. I, I don't know if it's now or in the future. I'm not trying to uh, try to read between that, but I see something where God's going to give you a son. There's going to come a son out of your legacy, and it's going to be a good setting where God begins to open the doors of favor for you and raise that up in that time. I don't even know if you're married. I don't know anything. All I know is that I see that God is doing that for you, and when that season comes, there's going to be a legacy, and he's going to carry on the name, and there's going to be a power that comes through that, and God will say with you in that day, I have watched over you then, I watch over you now, and surely it will be a sign unto you in that day, and I bless you in the name of Jesus. I speak life over you. I speak increase. And the Lord says, do not grow weary in standing. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Do not grow weary in the waiting. For I have her in the wings. I have the things in order for you. And all these things are unfolding. And my timing is on your life. For I love you and I know you. And I have protected you from even your own choices. And I bless you, man of God. You're a good man. And you're a warrior in the kingdom. That gift belongs in the house of God. And it's going to amplify the gospel. God bless you, man of God. I love you. You're a good man. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We okay so far? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, he's good. Thank you, Jesus. You know, all prophecy, you know, a lot of times you go to meetings and people are prophetic and all that, and a lot of it's frosted flake stuff. You know what I'm talking about? People make it all about themselves. This is about Jesus, okay? It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I like you, Mama. I do. You're anointed. Man. Praise God. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be praying over people all week, okay? We're going to be doing this every night, so we're not going to try to keep you too late tonight. We've got a lot going, and I want you to come back. I want you to bring people. We're going to change their life by the gospel, by Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. Sir, with the glasses right here, you have uh, questions, okay? And you need some things answered. It has to do with where your feet are. It has to do with what you're doing and what you're going to do next and how things are going to operate for you. And the Lord says, I see your prayers. I see that anointing in your life. I see what you've called on God for. You have a very unique blend of analytical design, very analytical, mixed with supernatural flow. It's a very interesting combination. And I speak life over you. You have the, the mind to catalog things, put things into order, and do all these things. Then on the other side of that, you have this flow with the Holy Spirit. It's unique. And God speaks to you in a very unique way. So I bless you tonight in Jesus' name. And here's what I see. I see your feet planted. I see a palm tree. I see your feet planted. I see strength in that moment. And the Lord says, I'll let you know when it's time to shift gears. I'll let you know when it's time to change. But right now, you're going to stand a little while longer because there's another domino that hasn't fallen yet. You're where you need to be. This domino has not fallen yet, but it's going to. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. I speak life over you by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. I bless you, man of God. That's awesome. I like you, brother. You've got an interesting sense of humor, too. I like you. You really do. Kind of this witty uh, intelligence humor. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Thank you, Father. Isn't he great? Somebody say, God is great. great. Say, my God God is great. great. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I think I'm going to come back there just for a moment. We've got a little bit of time here tonight. I'm just going to come back there. How many give me five more minutes? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, pastor, we're going. <laughs> I like you, brother. This is a man of God right here. This is a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. This man has stood when a lot of people haven't stood. I can see that in your life. I can see that in your heart. A lot of people have walked from you. A lot of people have hurt. A lot of people have done things. But the Lord says, I am pleased. And I continue to walk this out. And your day of significance is still unfolding. It has begun, and it's been a work. And you're going to find this. You're going to find that your significance has been in the sons and daughters you've poured into over many seasons. And over these many seasons, sons and daughters will rise up and call you blessed. They'll remember your messages. They're going to remember the things you've poured forward. And your vision, there's a vision that has also gone dormant in some areas. And the Lord says, no, 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 no. Just because it seems like it hasn't happened, Praise God. Even though it tarries in the timing of the Lord and in the timing of a man that's put his life in the hands of the Lord, it will surely come to pass. It will surely come to pass. I see another man standing by you, and I see this man bringing strength to you. I see this man bringing order to things, and it's a helpful situation. And the Lord says, I bring him because of the heart. The ability is a byproduct, but the heart first. I bring the heart. I bring the man. And the Lord's working with that man even now. And things are beginning to unfold. I see things in your accounting. I see things that God is working out by way of your bookkeeping. And the Lord says, oh, do not be afraid. I have many more things for you. I have things to expand inside you, tent pegs to expand, to grow in Jesus' name. I see the prayer of Jabez, that trendy prayer a number of years ago, but I see the name Jabez over you, and I see you speaking to the tent pegs and saying, God, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I sit over another pastor. I was in Brazil, and he had thousands and thousands of people and thousands of churches and hundreds of churches under him and and all that. And I'm standing with this man in Brazil, and I'll never forget. The Lord said to me, tell him his church is supernatural church. I said, supernatural church. He said, how do you know that? I haven't told anyone. We're renaming the church supernatural church. And I said, well, God told me to tell you that. I came all the way from America to tell you that. 
And I'm looking at you, men of God, and I see the marks of a warrior on you. I see the marks of study, the marks of discipline, and the marks of scars that have healed. Many scars. And they've healed. And the Lord says, thank you. Thank you. A lot of people would have just quit. You didn't. <laughs> it's, like, it's like what one man said about marriage one time. This isn't them or me or anybody, but what one person said about marriage. You know, we know we can't get divorced. Never talked about divorce. Talked about murder many times, but never divorce. Praise God. But this man of God here, just talking about your commitment, both of you, to the church, what God's done in you, and the strength he's given you. Sir, can we stretch our hands towards this man of God? his family, the woman of God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to release a blessing over you, over this church, over your heart to say, well, we thought it was something else, but we're going to do it anyway. Praise God. And I just say over you, we bless you in the name of Jesus. I call increase to this ministry. I call increase to the man of God. I call increase to his calling, his teaching, the sons and daughters that will rise up around him, that they will stand and bear his, his vision up and him up on their shoulders and carry him forward in this calling on his life. In Jesus' name, the pastor, the man of God, the man of God, the man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see a connection to you teaching more, and it has to do with a, a, more of a schooling setting, and God's going to give you an open door to that. You're going to begin to move in that. And I want to say to you as well, okay, I'm going to pray over one more thing. I saw like something jammed in you. I see a big thorn in you. I see this big thorn in you, and it's affected you. And there's things that have affected this ministry. You guys are awesome. So I'm going to say clearly, by faith, okay, I'm going to grab this and pull it out by faith. It's just a prophetic act. I'm just going to do this by faith. In the name of Jesus, we command these things to let go of this man. In Jesus' name, right now, you let go of the man of God, and I command there to be life and peace and strength. You're not going down. He's going to multiply more towards you. Things are going to multiply forward for you. And I call the man of God to stand with the good heart that stands by you and says, Sir, we will get there. In the name of Jesus, praise you, God. I bless you and I bless your family. The devil is a liar and the father of it. So I bless you in Jesus' name. Sir, it's going to work. I'm really glad we got to meet. I really like you guys. Thank you, Jesus. There's so many things I want to say, but praise God. Remember to pray for these guys. These guys are warriors, and they're giving their life for the kingdom, and they're doing this stuff, and God's going to expand this call. Amen. Man, I like you guys. God bless you. Mama, thank you for not quitting on us. Thank you for bringing the word. Thank you for loving people. Thank you for standing up even when you have to play hurt. You guys are amazing. My hat is off to you, and I salute you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Look at all this. We got some young people. Is this youth group tonight? Got some youth group? Amen. You know, I think millennials are the best young generation on the face of the earth. I do. I think you guys rock. Thank you, Jesus. You're so out of the box that you've created your own box. <laughs> I bless you, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I speak over this young lady here, peace and life victory, understanding. You're very intelligent. Uh, when you apply yourself to book work, straight A's for you. That will not be a problem. You are an intelligent young lady. Praise God. You have strength in you. You would make a good anything from librarian to attorney that's on your life. You're a powerful lady. Thank you, Jesus, for athleticism on this young lady, the strength of God that's on her, the blessing of the Lord that's on her, favor and life and increase in the name of Jesus. The Lord says, I've marked you. I've marked your family, and I'm going to continue to multiply you forward, and I've already prepared the knight in shining armor for you in days to come. Not in this season, but in days to come. He's waiting. He's coming forward. Don't waste time on any of that now. Wait till the days to come. He's waiting on you. He's your knight in shining armor. I bless you, woman of God. I speak life over you. You're awesome. I also see drawings and creative uh, free writing and things like that. I bless you in Jesus' name. God's good. 
Hallelujah. You guys are awesome. Like literally awesome. It's true. I know that word's overused today, but not for you guys. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I speak peace and life and the wisdom of God to cause wisdom to flow. Bless you guys. Praise God. I like them. Thank you, Jesus. Man of God, your mind is filled with many different things at many different times. You have a lot of information flowing through you. And I want to say to you, I release you of everything that would try and hinder your thoughts or your emotions. And I call that off of you, and I release to you the power of God to be fully uh, uh, committed to the call of God in your life. I bless you. You're God's man. You're God's warrior. You are a warrior and a champion. Look at me, young man. You're going to make it. You're going to dominate in life. You're a winner. You got nothing but horsepower. You got horsepower inside you. I look at you, you're filled with horsepower. You really are. You're highly intelligent, and you got a wicked sense of humor. You really do. This dude here, wicked sense of humor. Praise God. I like you, man. You're smart. Sometimes they say the most sarcastic people, it's because they're too smart, and so they don't know what to do with everybody else, so they're just sarcastic. So I bless you in Jesus' name. But you're a good, sweet man. I bless you. In the name of Jesus. Brother, I speak life over you. I speak increase to you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's opportunity for sales. There's opportunity for things for you that God will open up doors with. People are going to like you when you get into sales. You can work with tech. You can sell uh, vehicles. You could sell anything. God's given you the favor to do that. I don't know what this is, but there will be something. This may be way down the road, okay? It might not even make sense to you right now, but don't just put it on the shelf, okay? But I saw boats. I saw something about boats and uh, water, and I saw these marine things and all that, and God working that out with you, and it has to do with sales. So I bless you in Jesus' name. You're a good man. God's going to work out a process in you. Your mind thinks you're able to speak and convey what you want to have happen. I bless you. That verbal communication, really good for you. Good. In Jesus' name. How are you? I bless you in Jesus' name. Look at you. Intelligence. You have the mind of a doctor. You have the ability to uh, process through things and begin to cipher information and say, this plus this equals this every time. And here's how this works. So I bless you in Jesus' name. You could counsel people. You can walk them through information and get them to a good conclusion. God's given you favor and calmness. Don't let yourself get riled up. You stay calm about things and great favor will come as you stay calm because you have a demeanor of calmness. Use that. I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Something about another woman to her, like a sister. I, in Jesus' name, I speak peace. I speak wholeness in every area of your, of your uh, circle of influence in Jesus' name. Uh, be it friends, be it whatever it is, this circle of influence like a sister. I speak that circle, that there'd be peace and the right exchange of information for victory. I bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I speak life over you in Jesus' name. Praise God. You know, there's a lot of world changers in here. World changers in here. Not status quo. Filled with the word of God. Knowing where we're going. Knowing what we're doing. And God's word is inside you. God's word has been put in you as a seed. And it's important for you to stand up and step out into all he's called you to be. I bless you in Jesus' name. I speak peace over you. And I speak order to your mind and your emotions. I bless you. You're awesome. Praise God. I speak life over you in Jesus' name. Favor and abundance. Praise God. Quiet sarcasm. Amazing. How does that work? When you're writing and communicating with people, it's like it'll come through in your writing at times. A little bit of sarcasm and all that. But it's, it's a good thing. You're blessed to the Lord. You're awesome. And God's blessed you. And he wants you to win even more than you do. You're an amazing young lady. And God wants to magnify your life and bring you to the highest and best of your calling. I bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And uh, boys and stuff today, not a good plan. I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It's amazing how quickly things present themselves. So thank you, Jesus. I bless you in Jesus' name, sweetheart. You're God's girl. you got so many things you're thinking about. You're trying to find the path that fits you right now, and it's okay. You're going to find it so easy peasy, and God has marked your life. He loves you. He's leading you and guiding you into all victory right now. I bless you. You, you have so much good inside you that God has placed there that's going to unfold. Now listen to me. Sometimes in the beginning part of our walk, it seems like everybody's doing all this stuff. And what about me? What am I doing? I want to tell you, it's the second half of this 10 years or this five years that you're going to go, you're going to look at people that you thought were really doing stuff, and all of a sudden you're going to find yourself surpassing people. And you're going to look back and go, huh, faithfulness really works. I bless you in Jesus' name. You're going places. 
Thank you, Father. I bless this young lady. I speak peace and life and favor over you. I see music on your life. I see order on your life. I see all these different things that God's given you to multiply and walk you through with great victory. For the Lord your God is a sun and shield, and the Lord bestows favor and honor, and no good thing does he withhold to them who walk uprightly. No good thing will he withhold from you. I bless you in Jesus' name. That's important. Your grandmother, your grandmother had this virtue that she spoke and there was, there was good in her and there's these things in her and she carries this anointing and this thing and it's passed down to you. I just bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The prayers of the mama's mama in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I bless the woman of God in Jesus' name with clarity and victory and life and favor and all these things right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. There's increase that the Lord wants to do in your life, woman of God. You're over there. I didn't know you were there. You were just really engaging me just now. So I bless you by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You are God's woman. And I see something going on by way of uh, work, and career, whatever this is, and strengthening it so it multiplies you forward and you're able to step over some barriers you haven't gotten over in three years. And God's going to give you favor with that. The three years is over. You're coming into the fourth year. And the fifth year will be even better than the fourth. And the fourth year is when transition is happening. And God's going to give you great favor, great abundance, and great increase. And God is, he's pouring it out on you. And also to you, there will be a moment when you see water falling. It's interesting. It's almost like it's running down the gutter, so it must be a rainy day. And in that moment, you're going to realize, God's been with me. God's been with me. Look at that. I don't even remember that stuff. And now I'm here, and it's working. It's working. It's working. And uh, people are going to get word of that. It's going to multiply. It's something to do with uh, uh, just working out the process of exchanging. There's properties involved. There's stuff. So I bless you in Jesus' name. All is well in the kingdom. It's good in the hood for you. I bless you, woman of God, in Jesus' name. You're a godly lady. Praise God. You were back there. I didn't even know you were back there. And I'm sitting here, and I just I felt something come out of your thinking. And it shot over here. And I was like, look at that. Okay. Woman of God, I bless you. God is with you. Amen. Isn't it good when we meet godly people? God's awesome. Okay. Praise God. All right. Glory to God. Yeah, let's do that, Ryan. Why don't you come on up here? Thank you, Jesus. We doing good tonight? Amen. Love ministering to people. We're going to be here tomorrow night, too. So um, I'd like to just simply say this tonight. We are going to. Uh, be doing this all all week, uh, every Tuesday, tomorrow night, let's see, it'll be what, what's Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll be doing that, and then I think Sunday morning, we're also doing ministry, so praise God, we're going to, at this time, if you could please bear with me just for a moment, we're going to receive an offering tonight, is that okay, praise God, where we come from, and we say, hey, it's offering time, people usually applause, because they know they're going to get a breakthrough, so ladies and gentlemen, it's time to receive the offering tonight, <laughs> amen. So I just want to simply say this. Ryan and I have a mandate. Ryan's been doing kingdom youth conferences. We're doing this kingdom movement together. We're doing kingdom church live and all these things. We stand with the local churches. We're standing with people. We're raising up leaders. We're putting forward Bible college. All these things that we're doing, and God's called us to do it. We're reaching the nations and whatnot. Would you consider standing with us tonight and just giving the word of God uh, a boost by doing whatever God would have you to do by standing with the ministry? You can do that one of two ways. You can be a monthly supporter, or you can give a one-time donation tonight. And we have offering envelopes tonight if you'd like that. Does anybody want an offering envelope to stand with the ministry tonight? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what, this last year, I wanted to see God move in my life. So you know what I did? I gave away everything I owned. You say, oh man, what preachers doing this stuff. I think preachers should be some of the biggest givers in the body of Christ. That's what I think. Amen. <laughs> it's really quiet in this Presbyterian church. Thank you, Jesus. But, but I really like to say that is that we, uh, we've done that for a lot of times. And Heather and I, this last year, we gave our cars away. We gave uh, everything we could out of our bank account, and we gave it to ministry and did all these things because we don't want to give according to where we are. We want to give where we're going. Amen? If you give, it shall be given unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And it works. People say, I don't believe in that, you know, sowing and reaping stuff. I don't believe in all that. Well, don't talk to me about it. It's too late. It works. It works. 
I'll talk about that later, but it works, ladies and gentlemen. So tonight, please just do whatever God would have you to do. I'm going to pray over the offering, and uh, if you'd like to give tonight, we also have a bank uh, card machine in the back. Uh, is that back by you, Ryan, right there? Uh, see Ryan back in the corner there. If you want to give and you have a bank card tonight, and remember, you spell million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N, and, uh, and I'm serious about that, praise God. And you, if you want to give that way, you can, you can use your bank card, and you can see Ryan in the back, and they have it. You just swipe it. Very simple, very easy for you. So praise God. And those of you watching tonight online or on the live broadcast, if you want to give and this meeting's blessed you, uh, and you, I just feel like every meeting people should have an opportunity to sow into the Word. And, uh, you know, Ryan and I, we're not doing this for us. We're doing this so the ministry can go forward. And uh, I want to say that clearly, but you can go to josephz.com online and you can give on my website right there, josephz.com, and you can donate or become a monthly partner there. Thank you for considering that. So tonight, let's pray, okay? Thank you, Jesus. So Lord, we come into agreement with your word. We come into agreement for your promise tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless every gift and every giver that it would be a miracle offering for them that it would be a sowing and a reaping that would multiply back to their life in the name of Jesus. I, I release blessing and favor over the people of God tonight as they sow and they give. I'd simply ask you to do one thing. Ask the Lord what he'd have you to give. Don't do anything more. Don't do anything less. You do what God tells you to do. You do what you feel peace about. And I'll tell you what, if something pops in your spirit that you're supposed to give, I promise you it's not the devil. <laughs> I rebuke you, devil. No, that's the Lord. He's talking to you. And if you don't know what to give, give your billfold to the person next to you and say, be led. Amen. Well, oh, praise God. So tonight, thank you for that. Thank you for doing that. At this time, uh, why don't we come forward, gentlemen? Let's receive this evening's offering. And as we're doing that, if somebody needs a moment to fill out the envelope, you need a moment, the ushers will wait for you. You just, just have them wait, and they'll, they'll wait for you to fill that out. Take your time. Now would be the appropriate time. If you want to use your bank card, you could stand up, go see Ryan in the back, and you can use your card right now. That would be the time. You stand right up and go to Ryan. So praise God. Amen. Well, we've had a good night tonight. Amen. God's touching people. It's a good time in Jesus. Praise God. We're doing a lot more with the kingdom movement, a lot more with what God's called us to do. There's a lot of mighty things beginning to stir in the Word of God. Tomorrow night, we're going to begin to minister to people. Ryan's going to be preaching tomorrow night. If you haven't heard Ryan preach, i got to tell you, he is a delight to listen to. He's revelatory, he's powerful, he brings the Word of God, and he'll, he'll bring a delivering word tomorrow night. And we're going to minister more again tomorrow night for Voice of God. It's going to be a great evening. Uh, also, then my wife, Heather, we're believing that she's going to make it here. Uh, we had some things that we had to work out with our kids. And also she had, to, uh, uh, she had a little physical thing that popped up. You know, she had a kidney transplant a few years ago, and sometimes the enemy tries to fight us with that. And uh, she's doing very well right now. She said, Joe, I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm standing in faith. And uh, we believe she's supposed to be here. So continue to believe with us for Heather, okay, and speak over that. My wife is awesome. I love listening to her preach. She's my favorite preacher. And uh, she's going to be here preaching on healing and bringing a healing word uh, based on the gospel on Friday. It's going to be great. And we're going to be ministering for people for healing. Saturday night, we're going to just lay hands on everybody. It's going to be a rock and roll Jesus service, okay? So it's going to be a good time. We're going to prophesy. We're going to release healing. We're going to do all that stuff. But we're going to really just cut loose in the house. And uh, we're going to do the preaching of the word, the voice of God, all the way up till Saturday night. Every night's going to be powerful. But that night, we're going to really going to release the, uh, uh, the accumulation of the word we've preached. So it's going to be good. So please don't miss any of this. It's going to be a great time. Praise God. Well, are you blessed tonight? Somebody say, I'm blessed. Say, I'm full of faith. I am marked by God. His word is working in me. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Well, let's stand up to our feet tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, those of you on the live broadcast. Thank you for joining us. We'll be ministering here just a little bit more, but God bless you tonight. Thank you for being with us. We love you, and we'll probably be seeing you again in the morning on the live broadcast, Joseph Z on Facebook. And also, don't forget, Kingdom Church Live every Sunday on Facebook. Praise God.
Well, praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. Let me just pray a blessing over you this evening, and then we'll just give the Lord praise, and we'll be done this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless the people of God. Thank you, Lord. There's an intercessor right here, this woman of God on the second row. You have intercession all over you. You are filled with faith. You have the Word of God gushing out of you. People's lives change because of your prayer. There's not very often I see so many intercessors in one church. I bless you in the name of Jesus. She is. Thank you, God. And the Lord says he has prayed through you. And here's what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying. There's a lot of things I could say to you, woman of God. But I'm going to say this tonight. Here's what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you. Thank you for letting me pray through you. I hear that from the Lord. I'm going to say it to you one more time. He needs you. And he says, thank you for letting my words be manifested through your voice in this world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, people of God, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are kings and lords under the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Tonight's your night. Begin. Let's rule and reign and be ready to reign forever and ever with the Lord Jesus. Now, anybody who's gotten a word tonight, uh, Jason, my, my brother right here, this tall, handsome man uh, with the glasses, he's going around and giving cards to people who've gotten words. And what that is is he's recording them, and we put them on MP3 for you. So when the word is done and you go back, you can send an email in and request your word. And hopefully somewhere in the next week and a half, you'll get your word back, okay? So we'll, we'll email that to you. Then you can just open it up. You have your word because it's hard to think, like, what did that crazy guy with the action hero haircut say to me? You know, uh, then, then that way it comes to you in your email. Does that help? Okay, well, we love you tonight. Let's come back tomorrow night. Let's have a great night. Invite somebody. Invite your friends. Invite your enemies. They won't be your enemies anymore. And let's have a good night tomorrow night. God bless you. Thank you for being here for Voice of God. See you tomorrow. Amen.